Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about how we can solve some polynomial equations by using the method of factoring. So let's jump right into it. We have two examples here that we're going to look at, and example number one says 5x cubed minus 40x squared plus 80x equals 0. So notice how it's equal to 0 there. So that is key because we can use a property known as the zero product property, which essentially says if we have two terms or two things being multiplied together and their product is 0, well, one of those two terms had to be equal to zero, right? Either one of them or both of them because when we multiply two things or multiple things, multiple numbers or expressions or terms and we get an answer of zero, zero had to have been multiplied in there somewhere, right? So basically notice how on number one it's equal to zero, number two it's not equal to zero. So we want it to look like number one so that now we can factor the standard form trinomial that's on the left side get it in factored form, and then we can set those factors equal to zero. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So for number one, let's factor out a 5x. So we can factor out a 5x, and that's gonna leave us with an x squared minus 8x plus 16. So now we notice inside the um, parentheses we have a, a, a trinomial, right? And we have x squared minus 8x plus 16. So hopefully you're recognizing that this is a perfect square trinomial. So it's actually going to factor as x minus four quantity squared, okay? So x minus four quantity squared because if I look at my b term, which is negative eight, and I divide that by two, so negative four, and I square it, I get 16, which is my value I have for c. So essentially what we have is five x times x minus four times x minus four, and now we can set each of those equal to zero. Well, we say five x equals zero, we divide both sides by five, so we get x is equal to zero. So that's one of our zeros or solutions or roots of the equation. And then we say x minus four is equal to zero. So we add our four and we get x is equal to four. Now we're only gonna have two solutions or two roots for this equation because we had what's called a repeated root since we had a perfect square trinomial and it factors as the square of a binomial. So we don't say x equals four and x equals four, that's, that's the same thing, right? So we just have our two roots there. Okay, all right, example two, notice how we do not have this equal to zero. So essentially what we wanna do is move our 14x cubed over to the left side by subtracting it so that it can be equal to zero. So now we have two x to the fifth minus 14x cubed plus 24x is equal to zero. So now if we can just factor what's on the left, then we're good to go. So let's factor out a two and an x, so two x. So here we're just fact factoring out the greatest common factor. So now we're left with x to the fourth minus seven x squared plus 12. So now we can use some properties that we learned in algebra one on how to factor. And we've made a, a separate video um, in our algebra two course series about how to factor these. Um, so if we look at x to the fourth, let's just think about that as x squared minus seven x plus 12. So we would think, okay, what two numbers add to negative seven and multiply to positive 14. Well, that would be a negative four, so x minus four, and a negative three, okay? So that would be our two factors if it were a quadratic x squared minus seven x. Well, it's, it's raised to the fourth power, right? It's a fourth degree. So all we have to do is make both of these x squared. So now it's not factored completely because we see we have the difference of two squares right there. Okay, so now we can factor it down even more. So this would become x minus two and x plus two. And then this would still be x squared minus three. Okay, so now we have four terms here we can set equal to zero and get our zeros or our roots of the function. So two x equals zero, so we divide by two and we get x is equal to zero, so that's one. x minus two equals zero, so x equals two. x plus two equals zero, so x equals negative two. And now we say x squared minus three is equal to zero. We add the three, so we get x squared equals three, and now we need to take the square root. So anytime we introduce the square root when we're trying to solve and find roots of an equation, we have to include the positive and the negative value. So we're gonna say x is equal to negative the square root of three, so negative root three, and x is also equal to positive root three. So we actually have five roots on this one. Um, zero, two, negative two, negative root three, and positive root three, okay? And so that's how we can solve some polynomial equations using the method of factoring.